All right, we're live. We're live. We're live. All right, now, careful. Tell me where. There we go. I'm recording. I'm recording. All right, guys. All right, we're going to go over. Guys, come down. I know you're excited because we're on air. Hi. With memo. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, first things first. Baby, baby, first. No! That was a no. I know what she does. Hi, Jen. You want to give a good picture? Okay. Walking the runway. Alright, guys. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes for a word of prayer, okay? And I'm going to ask. Uh, uh, myself. Okay, let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening that you bless us with. Thank you for allowing us to be here in your house tonight, up here with the youth, Lord. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to serve and be able to be used as a tool for relaying the message that you have for all of us, me, myself included. And we're ready to learn to see what you have in store for us in order to use that as a way to get closer in relationship with you personally, Lord, Heavenly Father. And uh, we're just blessed to be here and have another day, another evening, uh, and be able to spend it with you in your house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. All right, guys. So, first question comes. Okay, this is question one. Comes from Sylvia. Okay? It's a very short question. It's very short. Okay, <laughs> now I'm just gonna uh, run through it really fast. Okay, my question or story at school, there's always evangelists you can say who are preaching. I know we've talked and discussed this and how to share the good news of Jesus Christ by, yes, acknowledging that we are sinners and have sinned against Him, but that through His glory and mercy we are covered in the righteousness when we accept Jesus as our Savior because He died on the cross for our transgressions like in a positive way, but these evangelists are preaching that God hates liars, homosexuals, and whores, and that every one of these people are going to hell. Overall, there is a lot of hellfire and brim brimstone and a lot about how even if you call yourself a Christian, but don't tell all the whores and homosexuals that they're going to hell, that you are sinning, and a lot of the sort. A lot of my classmates and friends are claiming that this is the exact reason uh, people are atheists and that the Bible contradicts itself and literally believe that everything this guy is saying is true Which I know not to be true love the sinner hate the sin type of thing all sin is equal like I'm a liar and you're a homosexual We're both sinners, you know What is the best way to explain all this and who the actual Jesus of the Bible is to these people? There's a lot to swallow. There's a lot of stuff. I'm eager to get into it Point one, I'm going to make. Okay, everybody has your Bible, right? Yes. Okay, the first section I'm going to uh, concentrate on is this. The other one says she, she, she was saying this. This is just a part of the whole thing we just read. At school, there are evangelists preaching that God hates liars, homosexuals, and whores, and that every one of these people are going to hell. Okay, that's the very first thing that I want you guys to focus on. Is this true? Now, how are we going to know if this is true? Where do we look to for the answer? Bible. The Bible, okay. Let's open up 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. How many of you guys say, no, this is not true? That those people are going to hell. Is that, do you agree with that? Raise your hand. Do you not agree with that? Okay. Now, I can see a reason why. Both ways you would think that, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see. When you guys open it, tell me amen when you have it. Amen. amen. All right, you guys got it. I'm gonna wait for uh, Eileen. Amen. You guys got it. All right. Now we're gonna read six to ten. I mean nine to ten. Okay, chapter six of First Corinthians, nine to ten. You read it there, I have it up here. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, 
nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, or nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers, nor inherit the kingdom of God. Now, what are the two big things that they were saying that, oh, they're saying that people are going to hell? Homosexuals and whores. Basically, you know, those two things are up there. In one way, they're up there. One straight out, the other one is within a couple of them. You know, so now, the, it says they will not inherit the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Plain and simple. This is not a true question. They're not going to heaven, right? But, watch. The answer is yes, it does say this. But does this telling people, does telling people this right off the bat, somebody that doesn't know God, uh, telling them right off the bat in this way, you see really help, does this really help the cause of spreading the word of God? You think if you go out and just say, hey, you're going to help because you're this, 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 this. No, right? It isn't. But we can't say that it's not in the Bible. It's in the Bible. But this is what happens. No, if anything, it hinders the spread of the word. But wait, there's more. Because <laughs> I told you guys to read verses 9 through 11. That was just verse 9 to 10. Sure, verse 9 to 10 sounds pretty bad. It's the truth. You know, those those sound like pretty, whatever, all that list of people were, that those, I mean, and you know, we include ourselves in that. Because we're one way or another greedy, idolaters, uh, sexually immoral. We're thieves. I mean, who's not so and so? Who's not lying? Who's cheap stealing? You know, I don't. Laser like right here. You know, it's your first day here, and you're a whole person. <laughs> but look to the passage. To the passage that is verse eleven. Then, can you read verse eleven? And that is what some of you were. For you were washed. You were sent. Sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Keyword, were. Okay? That's huge. Why do you guys think that's a huge word in that sense? Immediately after that list of horrible things these people are. It's past tense. And if you were that, what does that mean of you now? You changed, right? You are no longer the way you were, right? It says means that you have what turned from those ways, which equals what is that thing I've been teaching you guys? What it's like Jeopardy. This is the answer. You need to figure out the word. Okay. What is uh, to turn away from your sins? What does that mean? No, 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 no. I'm not saying it right. Doing this blank is turning away from your sins. Yeah, what, what, Danny? Come on! Repentance. repentance. Oh. That's repentance. Okay. Repentance, you guys. So it made a big list of all those things that, um, you know, we're, hey, drunkards, slanderers, this and that. Those people won't inherit the kingdom of heaven. But yet they can if they repent. So when you repent, you are no longer judged by those actions anymore. It's judged by the actions Jesus did because he sanctified you he washed you of all those things that you were but you need to repent so that you can be covered and sanctified and washed of those things and be able to inherit the kingdom of heaven a lot of people stop at that one list oh you guys are all going to hell you're doing this but they, they kind of like stop right there and hey listen read the rest of it the verse 11 is the most important part i would think it's saying but you were that now you somebody will ask okay well then how can i get from being were that well you gotta then you explain them you gotta you gotta turn away from what you're doing if you do that guess what you're gonna go to heaven sure you're that now but the intent the thing that people get a lot is when they're hearing preachings and people on the street with megaphones and all that stuff hey you're going to hell they don't they think that that's it that's all they hear like that that's it there's no way out of that oh i'm going to hell this and that it, of course later on they're like but if you accept jesus oh but by the time they hear all that junk that stuff first you really think man Come on, it's like somebody going in your face for the first time, first impression, saying that you're ugly, you're this, you're that, you that. You want to be my friend? You know, like <laughs> well, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. So, um, point two. Okay, now you guys agree that stuff that people say on street corners and stuff, it is biblical. It's in the Bible. Don't say it's not. Right? 
But there's a key part, and that's reading the rest. Of it. That, that was just picking out a chunk of the Bible. you got to read the rest in context, and, and there is a way for those people to inherit the kingdom. Okay? So, number point two. This is something else that she said, uh, Sylvia. How even uh, if you call yourself a Christian, but don't tell the, the whores and homosexuals they're going to hell. Basically, uh, this person that I was telling Sylvia, okay, how can you even call yourself a Christian if you don't even go tell those type of people they're going to hell? So they're still stuck on, you're a Christian, you must go and do those things those people are doing on the street corners. But again, like, she, this person coming up to Sylvia obviously thinks that if you're a real Christian, somehow that means you're all Christians should be that person on the corner. You know, yelling with the megaphone, just saying the first part of that verse. I'm not saying she preaching is wrong. No, it's needed. But in the way that they're saying, this this person, which happens to be atheist, I, I, would, I think that's what I read. Um, they're connecting, well, you don't do this. So how do you even call yourself a Christian? You guys, you guys get it? Now, that's called a loaded question. It's assuming something. It's assuming two things, okay? Can, can you guys tell me what it's assuming? How can, it's like if I go up to Danny, how can you call yourself a Christian if you don't even tell people they're going to hell? That's assuming two things. You know what two things it's assuming? It's already, it's like saying, Jose, do you hit your dog? Does your mom know you hit your dog? <laughs> See, that's a wrong question because you don't hit your dog, but it already assumed that you do hit your dog, you know? So, look, that's a loaded question. There's two assumptions in it, okay? The experts on Christianity, which are hilarious because they claim what a Christian is when they're not a Christian, you know? Like, the atheist, you know? In this example, some atheists from Soviet school assume the following two things from that statement I said. One, that we don't tell people they're going to hell. That's not true. This church, we do explain to people, hey, exactly what I just told you. I just told you right there. Those people are not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Okay? They're not. But I didn't stop there. I kept going and explaining, right, in the right way. I didn't just go, hey, you guys all suck. You're going to hell. God doesn't love you. No, I didn't say that. Okay? I, You know, we do. So they're assuming we don't. They were assuming Sylvia doesn't go out and do that. Okay? Or just say that they're going to hell. So that's assumption number one. That's not true. Second is assuming that if we don't tell people, that somehow doesn't make you a Christian. So you're saying, they're assuming, if that it's like a defining factor. If I don't go and tell people, let's say I don't, which I do because I just told you right now. But if I don't ever tell anybody they're going to help, that doesn't make me a Christian automatically. No. No, you guys all know that. What, what is the number one key to getting to heaven? To inheriting the kingdom of God. Re yeah, repenting and what? Accepting Jesus in your life, right? Now, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with that that will make back up your faith. Obviously, you'll have fruits. You'll obviously do things the way Jesus told us to in Christ-like life. That's what a Christian is. But literally, you know, if you don't ever tell somebody that they're going to hell, that automatically doesn't make you a Christian. It's just it doesn't no. One is not contingent on the other one. They don't both need to be there. I can't say I'm a Christian and I need to go do this. Because remember what I told you guys in so many lessons and in the videos I've taught? Our faith is not like a religion. Our faith says we don't need to do anything. It's all what he did for us. That's why he died on the cross. Because if he died on the cross and, and we still need to go out and do something, that means what he did was worthless. Because it didn't reach enough for me to still have to go do things in order to be saved. You get me? It still requires me to do things. Being a Christian means you don't need to be perfect. He knows you're not perfect. Doesn't mean you shouldn't strive for perfection. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do good things. That that, that comes along with being accepted, you know, ex, you know, accepting God as your, as your Savior, you know, Jesus. You should go do things. It backs up that you actually, what happened in here was act, actually happened. You know, doesn't mean you can go do bad things. It's not a ticket of sin, you know. It's like, um, it, it was funny. There was this uh, Facebook post I saw. It was really sad. It said, uh, who loves Jesus and uh, uh, but can, but will still curse you out? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, and, and it was like in a way that was very prideful. That didn't, no, that doesn't make sense, you know. 
Guess who loves Jesus? Basically, guess who's a Christian, but I can still cuss, cuss you out. No, that doesn't, no. Jesus didn't live a life like that, okay? It's not a ticket to sin. Hey, I'm saved, so since he saved me, you know, and he has all this forgiveness, I'm going to go ahead and just sin it up, man. No, you guys know that. It's already, it's, it's you know, a replay for you, okay? But um, a lot of people think that because you don't do something physically that somehow Jesus didn't save you. So not saying people are going to hell makes it, oh, Jesus, he couldn't have died for you because you need to say you're not going to hell. You're going to hell to some people. No. Okay. It says there. Now, this person that talked to Sylvia, their main tactic or goal in how they were arguing, and you're probably going to have this come to you like people, friends at work, at school, you know, when they come up to you and they tell you something similar like this. Hey, but you don't go and you tell you don't go and tell people they're going to hell because of this and this and this. You know, that person was attacking how Sylvia spreads the word. Their goal was to attack, hey, how can you be Christian if you don't do this? And what the thing was was about saying spreading the word. Okay? So that's what we're gonna focus on. Oh dang it, I had it all out of order. So we don't tell people we're going to hell <laughs> false. We do. And then assuming we don't tell people that somehow you're not actually a Christian and it says, that's not true. That's impossible. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you guys, come on. So, all right, look, 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 two common strategies for spreading the word. Okay? This was, her whole thing was about spreading the word. The person was attacking how she doesn't go and street preach with the megaphone and do all that kind of stuff, you know, in a negative way. If, if you guys notice, this person that Sylvia's talking to, and this is that, has a very incorrect view of what it truly means to be a Christian. It's very distorted, you know? And and that's what we need to oh, pause. All right. <laughs> I'm like, Because okay. oh. we're live on YouTube right now, Andrea. Okay? <laughs> Metro PCS got to advertise for me now. <laughs> All right, now look. Uh, gosh, now I love track. What was I saying, man? I don't know. I was saying, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? On no, spreading no. the word. On spreading the word. Okay. Look. She had a wrong view of like. Oh yeah, the people had a wrong view <laughs> of what a true Christian was. They label. That's why I hate it when people are like, uh, you know, they take one Christian that's not doing the right stuff or supposedly a Christian not doing what they're supposed to do, not being Christ-like, you know, that affects so many other Christians on spreading the word. It hinders us, you know. So these are the two common strategies of sp spreading the word, okay? The law-focused strategy. Now, this is not just two. There's a lot of ways. I'm just focusing on, on these two common strategies. There's the law-focused strategy and the gospel-focused strategy. I'm going to enlarge this next time so that you guys can see, okay? So uh, I'm talking to my like, viewers, okay? One viewer? <laughs> so, look, look. No, One viewer? Look, Abby, hi, Abby. And Not, Sylvia, too. And Sylvia, hopefully. All right, look. Wait, listen. The first strategy is the law-focused strategy. This is the typical picture of street preachers with megaphones in public and, um, that atheists especially attribute to Christians being as a whole, okay? So when you, uh, somebody, that's in my opinion, okay? When I think law-focused that this person, their mission in going and getting people to know about God and spreading the word, their focus is the law. I'm going to have to go. I need to tell them what's wrong with them. They're sinners. You guys, this, 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 this. You watch. You think of these people. Okay? Look, this one oh, it says, free to get a hell inside. This one says, God hates you. Sodomize, uh, sodomites, abortionists, drunkards, just the way you are. And then right here it says, uh, rush, uh, uh, trust Jesus. <laughs> I don't think that's what Jesus really wanted for us to do at all. You know, Jesus never once went up to somebody and just condemned them right, right off the bat. I'm a, you know what? When you guys go, I'm not going to say it yet. I'm not going to say it yet because I, I want to go through the gospel part first. But look, this is what you typically think of. When you think of somebody that's really focused on the law, 
really condemning people. Condemning people who left the right, hey, you're this, you're that, you're that. And, you know, you don't see a lot of good in it. You don't feel good. If somebody is just like I told you the example, if somebody brand new to you wants to become your friend and starts saying you're this, you're that, you want to be my friend, it's not really going to happen. You know? So um, it preaches primarily on self condemnation. You are sin. You are against God. You're going to hell. So and so. Okay? Now, uh, doesn't mean it's wrong entirely. It's just the way you bring it up. That's what we need to focus on. And that way is not really, I, in my opinion, the way. No, it's not. It's not. The way they did it is not how Jesus, I believe, he wouldn't have done it that way. You can tell somebody that, but it's in its time. Because the point is, you're you're not out there to go and, and tell everybody, you're going to hell. You can't come with me to heaven. Oh, no, no. And keep them there. That sounds like you're going to. Look, we got this group, you guys and us, who are going up to heaven. You know, it's like you don't want them to come with you. You know, you want you want them to come with you. So you gotta speak tenderly to them. You gotta speak passionately. You gotta speak with a kind heart. And then later, you know. But anyway, the gospel focus strategy is typically the picture is most Christians who don't really street preach, but speak more at a personal level rather than public. Like what I like to do. Okay, um, and I I literally did it today. At work, one on one with like I know you guys did it a few times, but like at work, I'm not out in public yelling and screaming. You know, not saying that that's not good, but I feel like at a more personal level, if I'm talking to somebody, you know, and I'm asking them their views, and I, I gives gives me the opportunity to share my views and explain to them why I I have the kind of relationship I have with my God, and you know, hoping they would see you know my passion for Jesus. And I'm not. I'm focused more on what he did for me, you know, what he did, his love, his, you know, unconditional, you know, love, his forgiveness, what he did for me. It's not about my sin against him. It's not about what I did, you know, my sin, what I need to do. It's not focused on that. You know, it's focused on what he did for me. And then since I'm not focusing on what they're doing wrong, they're seeing how passionate I am about my God and what I'm doing, you know, in a relationship with him. That's more attractive for them to inquire more about what it is to be a Christian than it is if I were to start the conversation. Well, you know, you're a drunkard, you're a liar, you're a cheat, you're a, you're an idolater, you're this and that. That's you guys know. It's just pretty. Easy. So uh, preach. Look, this type of focus preaches primarily on selfless love, Jesus, his life, how he lived, his love, his sacrifice. Okay, his kingdom in heaven. Okay, now I'm not saying you go out and all you do is gospel. All you do is gospel. No, no, you need to have a balance. Okay, and as a teacher of mine in high school taught me, you know, uh, you have to have a balance between the two. You know, you have to have both law and gospel because technically it's like saying, you know, uh, you can't be saved if you didn't know you need to save. You get me? If you didn't know you needed saving, why are you gonna call nine one one? You know, you know that's it's why are you gonna call you know GOD? You know you, you're not gonna need them if you don't think you're in need. Okay, so you need to have a balance of the two. You can't have law without gospel. You can't have gospel without law. Okay, you can have you can the world does a good job of having either or, but not both. And when they do that, you're blinded. You're it's like seeing you know and not hearing you know or something. Doesn't matter what. It's like going on and you can't see the whole picture, you know? You can't see the whole picture. You need to see the whole picture because there is, like I told you in the past, um, my now, you know, uh, I was an alumni at Pacific Lutheran High School and my teacher, Mr. Fischero, was teaching that. And then I had, I brought up this um, this pastor that's on TV. I'm not going to say his name, but this pastor that was on TV and uh, he, you know, he's very famous, very big, but he's very big on just gospel, 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 gospel. He, he never makes it a firm, hey, but you guys, if you don't change your lives and what you're doing, you know, you're doing this, you're sinning against God. You're doing this stuff. You're basically turning away from what he wants you to do. It's like a slap to his face. If you don't realize you're doing that stuff, you don't feel a heaviness to your heart and a need to start doing things differently for God. You know, and this 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 preacher would never talk about that. He would always be happy, happy this, 
do this and oh these are seven ways or however many ways to get your life you know uh, have, you know be successful or this whatever okay it got to the point where this past and I showed you a video you guys probably remember um, for the most part and the video was him on a, on a show it was actually Larry King live I believe and uh, my, my teacher in, in high school showed us his principal now at that school really really good really good CG taught me a lot uh, theologically and everything but he, he showed the video, and I was, I was shocked because the pastor was brought up by this guy, this interviewer, Larry King. He said, you know, okay, so are you saying if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to hell? You know? And he couldn't say, yeah, that's true. He just said, you know what, I'm not willing to judge this and that. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's such a clean-cut answer. Yes, you are. But because we want to appeal to everybody, no, 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 that's the truth. But guess what? No. You, what I would say, yes, you are, but there's a way not to. That's the message of, the, of, of Jesus. There's a way to inherit his kingdom. He did something for you, so you don't have to suffer going to hell. It's not about you're this way. There's no way to change. Therefore, you're going to hell. No, there's the way. you got to put your work in it, repenting, turning away from what you were doing, and he will cover you and wash you of all the things you've done. Okay? So you have to have, you have, to have a balance of the two. Both strategies need to point. This is the part where I told you I was going to wait. Now, when I was showing you guys the signs of the megaphones, the people that were preaching and all of that, and then versus somebody that doesn't want a personal like example when I was talking to my coworker about that, okay? The way that you know which one is the one you should do, whether you mix the two, you do more of one or more of the other, you want to ask yourself, which, which way points to salvation? Which way points to more to, hey, there's a light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing, you know? They're the opposite of salvation is what? Con condemnation, right? Condemned, to be condemned. You're either saved or condemned, okay? And really, realistically, I don't even have to, it's a no-brainer. The other way, when you're just out there, oh, you're going to hell, that's straight condemnation. That's straight you don't feel good. You're not. That's not pointing to salvation. Again, you can go out and show. You. I saw a whole bunch of signs with people saying really good things, saying Jesus loves you, very simple things, and other things. I hate Jesus died for you, this and that and that. That's a good way. Remember, I I, I recorded one time. I could, just couldn't find it, but I actually went out to somebody that was street preaching. They had a sign, but I didn't realize what the sign said. The sign said something really good. It was not at all, you know, like those people. Hey, there's a free ticket to hell inside because obviously I bet you know there's probably some non-Christian event happening behind her, you know, but that doesn't bring anybody closer to you, you know. Um, but if you're doing it the right way, if it points to salvation, the message of salvation, not condemnation, then you're doing something right, you know. You don't want to talk bad about other people. Even though, you know, I like to debate and stuff and kind of like slam, you know, Islam or Mormonism or all those kind of things, I don't do it like slamming and saying, ha, ha, ha. No, I, I do because I want them to see the light that, hey, you got, you're, you're following something that's of the enemy. You're not following the true God, the living God. I want you to open your eyes and see that, you know, so that you can make the necessary changes because you do not know what for tomorrow brings. Tomorrow, the next hour is not promised, okay? If something were to happen and you're like, oh, I'm just going to wait. And then later, you know, I, it was sad because Literally, <laughs> last week, right before I came, I was going to come, but I missed last Friday. Uh, as uh, I was doing my lesson, I was trying to get it ready. And then I know it's just the enemy or something, but at the same time, God kind of helped me. He kept interrupting me. I'm trying to finish, you know, uh, the lesson. And then he's like, it's like, man, I grew up with, you know, my family in Honduras and they're Christian. And that. I'm like, well, then, man, I'm like, you know, why don't you want to be Christian? You've heard the word and all that stuff. It's like, oh, because, man. If I, if I say I'm saved and I go and I have to, I have to stop going to parties, I have to stop, you know, hanging out with the girls and stuff. I don't want to do that. I'm like, wow, man. <laughs> like, that was the most honest answer anyone has told me. It's like, because I, realistic, he didn't phrase it like this, but this is exactly what he said, because I'm not done sinning yet. <laughs> like, okay, first, there's two wrong things about that. You know it's bad. First, he acknowledges that he knows that stuff is wrong. 
there's like a moral compass in his heart and in his mind. He knows that's the wrong. And he doesn't want to give it up. That's just showing his God is himself. He, his God is this, this meat. He can't give it up. And it's not that he can't. He won't because he wants it. Okay? He And and, and, and it, it's crazy because it's just like, it's so plain and simple. And he know, and, but the second thing that was wrong with what he said was that, and that's what I thought when, before I got baptized, he thinks he's going to have to be perfect. He thinks, hey, I'm saved now. If I go in that and, I'm, and I accept the Lord and I tell everybody, man, not only do I have to stop going to this perfect, I'm going to have to be perfect. No, that's not anywhere in the Bible. No. That's why God died. Jesus died because he knows we're not going to be perfect. He knew he covered that. It's not for us to go purposely sin, but we're supposed to stop doing what we did. The obvious thing, stop going to those parties. Stop drinking and getting drunk. Stop doing all those things you know you're not supposed to be doing. You know, and, and realistically, a lot of things, yeah, they're hard, but all the really tough decisions are worth doing. You know, it's like studying for that test. You studied so much for it, and then you get an A, and you thought it was worth it, you know, because you studied. You know, he didn't want to give up those things, not only because he thought he wanted them, but he thought, thought he was going to be the perfect human being, and he thought he couldn't do it. I can't be perfect. I'm going to fail. You got. We got to go out with that message. That's what people don't need to know because so many people out there are do, preaching the word wrong, and these kind of words are what these people need to hear, that you don't need to be perfect. You don't. You, God did that for you, but you do got to strive to do your best to do what God wants you to do. How do we know which one we need? I already said that. Whichever one is more Christ-like, the one pointing to salvation. The obvious. So, of course, we need to say who goes to hell and who goes to heaven. But it is not what defines our salvation. You know what I mean? What, what do I mean? Hazel. Your sister Jenny, I need the answer from. Uh, Jenny, what does that mean? <clears throat> Of course, we we need to say that pe uh, some people are going to hell. Uh, we can't spe uh, one thing too. You can't specifically go, hey, you're going to hell. No, we don't know everybody's hearts, okay? But we do say that these types of people that the Bible says are going to hell. Um, but does that mean? Does that define our salvation? Does that mean because I did that, I'm saved? Is telling people they're going to hell mean I'm saved? No, right? That's the obvious. It was obvious, but I don't know if that was too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> All right, point three. This is what Sylvia said. A lot of my classmates and friends are claiming that this is the exact reason why People aren't Christian is because they say that the Pope contradicts itself. Okay? The main reason why people don't believe in and atheists don't believe in the Christian Bible, the Holy Bible, is because there's mistakes. There's things that are opposite of each other. They go against their contradictions. Okay? They're assuming again. I, I would like to show me. Where are the contradictions? Please. Exclamation point. Most people that say this. Have one never read the Bible for themselves and have cherry picked what other non believers have said. But for the people who have actually made these claims, saying that there's contradictions, what they point out as contradictions are not even contradictions in the slightest. Examples of false contradictions. This is a, a, a really clean cut example of somebody saying, Oh, here it is. Memo. These are contradictions. This is why I don't believe in the Bible. Um, open up Matthew 27 37. 80, open up, Mark 15, 26. Address, Andrea, one of you guys, look up Luke, no, 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 sit down, never mind, I don't want, I don't want you to do that, don't worry. Uh, Lorena, can you get Luke 23, 38? Wait, 15, 36? Yeah, 15, 26. Hmm. All right, who got Matthew 27, 37? 
Udah saya sudah kira tahu. Okay, pause the video. Uh, above his head, they placed a uh, written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Okay. Now, who was Mark? Mm -hmm. The written notice of the charge against him, the King of the Jews. Luke? No, no, no. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem. No, no, 2338. Luke 2338. Oh. Oh. There, um, there was a written notice of which read, this is the king of the Jews. Okay. Memo, this is a contradiction. Matthew 27, look. This is the part. Everything says the same on the first part of it. But this one says, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. They're talking about that there's a, a an encryption of where Jesus, you know. And then uh, the in Matthew, it says, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. In Mark, it says, the king of the Jews. In Luke, it says, this is the king of the Jews. That's a contradiction. Oh, my freaking goodness. Are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, this is a plain description, description of what a freaking sign says at Jesus' crucifixion. You're going to tell me. You're hanging the whole faith of Christianity. And you're, what if Christianity is right? What if it is? And you said no because of that, because of a sign and the wording of it. That's not a contradiction. They're all saying the same thing. Now, do we, I mean, it's just like, um, it's like another contradiction where uh, in, in the Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, at the different parts of where Jesus' tomb is, when, it's, uh, uh, when he raises from the dead, there's an angel that goes. And then um, in another of the gospel, it says there was two angels. And another one says there's one angel. And it's like, that's not a contradiction. You know, hey, there were angels. Maybe, honestly, maybe one was like, maybe they didn't see the other angel. Maybe there was really two. But does that, that does not make the whole faith of Jesus, of in believing him, come down. Hey, that's, no, it's not. You know, it, and then I also think, too. Not all languages can be translated perfectly. Like in Spanish, there's so many different, uh, the Eskimos have so, I think they, I don't remember, it's like probably a hundred or something, different ways to say the word ice. We have one way, ice, you know? In another language, you say so many different ways, the same word that we say. So who's to say that didn't happen here? But guess what? It still says the same thing. Out of all of them, you can get out, well, Jesus was the king of the Jews. This is uh, the king. This is the king. Oh, come on, man. You, really? So, take away. Those who are looking for contradictions may therefore say, See, the Bible is full of mistakes and choose to reject it entirely as being untrustworthy. The godly base uh, their confidence on two truths. This is how we base the truth are, uh, in the Bible, okay? What we believe. Number one, all scripture, the word, this Bible, okay, is in, is in inspiration by, what, given by inspiration of God, meaning it's God breathed, breathed. God used through people to write his word, okay? This is the literal word of God. And I invite you guys all, at the California uh, Science Museum, they have the Dead Sea Scrolls there. And it's amazing. I, I, I want to go. It's the, one of the oldest manuscripts of the Bible. And it was found, and you guys should look it up. It's like literal, like it's ancient. And people have translated it's exactly what the Bible today says. So nobody can be like, oh, it changed over time. We don't know what was the written. Oh, come on. That's over years. Even though it might not be the very first Bible, that's years and years and years. It's ancient. For it to still be the same, that's incredible. But we, as Christians, believe in two things. That um, the word of God is inspired, um, the Bible is the inspired word of God. Okay, I mean, it says in 2 Timothy 3.16. And two, this was all I got off of a website that I liked what it said. Okay, look, it says, two, God has deliberately included seemingly, seeming contradictions in his word to snare the proud. He has hidden things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Luke 10, 21. I didn't say 
he put contradictions in there. What does it say? Okay, they look. Why would God do that? Why would you? I'm not saying this is uh, this is like an opinion of somebody, but I, I kind of believe that because remember this, First Corinthians one twenty seven. We just went over not too long ago, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Now, he picked the foolish things. The people that God wants to follow him are those who are willing to humble themselves, to bring themselves down and look up to him in reference a everything, all glory to God. Not the people that think they're all proud of this. I did it. I did this and that. They think they're wise and they know everything. God says those type of people I don't want. I want somebody that's going to submit to me, love me, knowing who I am. So he, I would, and this is funny, he would put something like the two angels on the one angel, the encryption of the king of the Jews, the Jew, the Jesus, the uh, king of the Jews, the Jews, the king, whatever. Those little things to make these kind of people look stupid. <laughs> you know, like, look, they get bogged down on things like that. It's going to Shame, make the foolish things, those such a little thing. Shame the wise. It says it right there in the Bible. So when this guy, in, in when I looked online, says he included it uh, to snare the proud, he has hidden things from the wise and revealed them to us, to the people that are willing to humble themselves. I'm not saying the wise can never inherit the kingdom of God, but the, the people that he claims wise need to bring themselves down and understand, hey, it's because of God. You know, and not because of their own knowledge, you know. So um, I, I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, that's what you should take away from that, the contradiction thing. Okay, Jeremiah 29. And let me just show something. Okay, this is this. And then the next one. A huge reason, ultimately, why people don't believe in God or... They try and try and they just can't, they refuse to believe it. It's because, or they say, I've tried to look for God, but I can't find him. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Again, one of my principal, Mr. Pichier, he, he he did this one time. He went outside of the room. And uh, I believe there was like, um, we had a classroom that had like a room and another room connected. Okay, But there were separate rooms. He said, pretend I'm God. I'm right here. And let's say Alasia is looking for, for God, for me, right? She barely comes into the room, and I go into one of the other rooms. She's saying, I don't see God here. Then she goes into the far room, that, that, but, and then I come back out of that room, out of another room. She's like, he's not here. Then I quickly go into another room while she goes into the room that I was in. It's not that God doesn't exist. It's just she couldn't find him. You know, that was kind of an example. Like, if you want to find him, you got to continuously try to find him with all your heart. Because if you don't, just because you didn't find him yet, doesn't mean he doesn't exist. Okay? He exists. It's just he only brings himself to you if you search him with all your heart. Because he deserves no less than that. He deserves complete 100%. Okay? Just like in a relationship with uh, Andre on Andres, Jackie and Danny. Do you guys ever want a relationship? with your you know your significant other half-hearted do you want half of danny's heart you know and danny the other half would be like with whatever you like to do no would we want half of her heart no same thing do you want half of her heart on dress and the other half be boost mobile no right <laughs> no man same thing with you andrea and more for girls i think because girls have a really strong yeah you're clingy yeah but do you want half of Andres's heart? Would you have wanted him half at your wedding? No, right? You want to be all there, you know? So um, anyway, that's how God wants us to. That's why some people, they can never find God because they're never fully, heartedly searching for him. The big question is, is it, what is the best way to explain all this and who the actual Jesus of the Bible is to these people? This was the last thing Sylvia said. What then? How can we explain it? Now, look, it's not really one answer I can give to this, okay? Uh, because every situation calls for different types of action. The best way, in my opinion, is to address such a person 
as in Sylvia's scenario, would be to first respond to exactly what the person is misinformed about. So in this case, they were misinformed that we don't tell people they're going to hell. They're misinformed that that makes you a Christian if you do that. If you don't, you're not a Christian. So you got to tell them, first, hey, you know, that's not a real Christian. A real Christian doesn't, you know, do do that. And if they don't, they're going to hell. No. And I do tell people they're going to hell. I just don't go and slap it in their face. Because who's going to want to talk to me and really know about the good news of the Lord, you know? Uh, so address first what you know they know wrong about them, okay? About you, about Christians. And then from there, build, you know? Tell them about that. And then correct them on their views of what a true Christian is. The enemy is well-versed in twisted words. It is our mission to get the truth out there, okay? The end. Let's just cut for the All right, guys, and before, I want to show you guys. Okay. All right, guys, say bye. Calm, calm down. Abby, tell, tell your sister, calm down. All right, All right guys, so uh, bye.